In this video, we'll take a quick look at five newish quality of life features in Business Central. Some are really new, some are not quite as new, but they might have passed you by, so they're worth you checking and seeing if they could help your, your working life. Some might need to be enabled in feature management. Let's start. If we go to the general ledger setup, there's a new feature called data check. Now this used to have to be turned on in feature management with the updates moving forward. I believe this is no longer required, but you do need to actually enable it in your GL setup. Once enabled, it will then offer an extra degree of checking and pre-warning people when they're working with documents and journals. If I go to my sales orders list page and I choose a sales order, A notification will pop up like so inviting me to enable this so it is a, a per, per user feature it's classed as personalization if I click enable this for me I now see the document check fact box and here quite usefully it's warning me there is an issue on this document in the the bicycle is missing a dimension value if I hover over it needs the product dimension value adding, which is not a shortcut dimension. So I'm going to need to add it the long way. If I add product and the value of bicycles and close, document check is happy. The exact same should happen on a journal. So if I head to my general journals and I jump onto an example batch and I'll make sure I have the fact box pane visible, I'll see the journal check and it will check as I go line by line, which could be quite useful. Tied in with this is the next feature, posting preview. Been around for quite a long time. If I just drop in some nominals here so that I can make this work, temporarily hide that I can do a two for one because I'm seeing debit amount and credit amount as well as the amount column so in and th this has been around for some time but it wasn't in every single version so it, it's kind of lost as to when it appeared so I want to make a change and do a, a movement between these two accounts in the past I would have had to use the amount column and do that I'm crediting that account but actually I can just type it in credit amount I can type in debit amount in here so I'm going to debit hundred pounds so I can use these two columns rather than have to put the sign in front of the amount column which many people feel much more comfortable doing this is working because again in the general ledger setup we have this show amounts by default you'll probably find it set to amount only no one wants to use it with debit and credit only, but all amounts is the recommended alternative because it then means you have this lovely view where you can see the debits and credits. Now, one byproduct of that, if I come off my journal, is if I take a quick look, for example, at vendor ledger entries, you do end up with an awful lot of columns because I have amount, amount LCY, debit amount LCY, credit amount, credit amount LCY, you get the idea. And I think there was even more before I cleaned things up. So you might just need to, through personalization, so cog, personalize, consider whether you want every single debit and credit amount column showing um, through personalization, because if I've taken off debit amount already, left in credit amount so I had a, a refresher so you might need to clean things up afterwards on the vendor ledger entry the custom ledger entry same kind of pattern you will have debit amount debit amount LCY credit amount credit amount LCY and they could be things that you don't necessarily need to see same will happen in your charter accounts debit amount credit amount 
which could be handy and also on the GL entries so pretty much everywhere that you'd expect a debit and credit to be relevant it drops the columns in and then you through personalization can decide if you really want to see it but the main benefit is you then come to do things like cash receipt journals you jump onto your cash receipt journal and you can just fill in the credit amount column that this customer's paid us £500 and it does the sign for you, which will make much more sense for most people using the system. So that was in the general ledger setup, changing the show amounts to show all amounts. Like I say, it was around in earlier versions of NAV and Business Central. They've done the hokey cokey a bit with it being available or not and exactly where it's set up from, but it's definitely worth you considering turning on. That now I'm here leads me into the posting preview. Posting preview has been around for quite a long time. It's really useful. You have a standard and extended version now. So on the journal I was playing with earlier on my batch, almost like I planned this stuff. We have my journal check going, okay, you've got two lines, there's no issues. Now, if I just want to prove that it really is doing something, if I change that, I change the document number. I did have to hit refresh F5 to make that trigger. If I drop down off the line, that will be forced to refresh, but it knows it's out of balance now. And when I fix that again, down the line, up a line. So your normal working progress should be going up and down the lines anyway, which will trigger the refresh and document check is doing its job for you, which is handy. Now the posting preview, preview posting, click the button. In fact, it's worth mentioning, uh, that was originally hidden in this little drop down menu. And I suggest to most people personalizing, click the call, click personalize, and dragging it out like I'm doing for post and print, putting it on the bar here so you've not got to click down and you don't forget that it's there because what you don't see, uh, there's a risk of you overlooking. So you can pin that like I just did here. I unpinned it and then pinned it. And then you can see your preview posting as well as test report and whatever else might be helpful to you. And if it's not so helpful, like that one isn't just hide it. Okay, so now we can see preview posting. What's it going to do? Well, if I click preview posting, it will show me what will happen before it happens. So I see there are two GL entries, which is great. And I can see that. If I get back into the general ledger setup and I turn on the extended preview posting, head back and hit preview posting. It's kind of saving me some clicks. It's giving me the GL entries pre-expanded and I can take a look at those. And if it were a more involved posting with other ledgers, then I would have the VAT entries also pre-expanded and other related entries down here. And you can turn on a hierarchical view. So it will change the arrangement and display them in a list. So if I go to a more complex posting, So if we come to our sales invoices and I just create a new sales invoice briefly. And I invoice the customer for some of these lovely Paris guest chairs they've just taken delivery of. And I go to preview posting with the extended version turned on see the difference of not having to click to see the GL entries and then click to the VAT entries. I've got those two pre-extended for me. I do still have the related entries further down for the other ledgers or the detailed ledger entries. And I can still click to interrogate those should I wish to. But it's saving you some time seeing the pre-expanded sections or change the view entirely and show it in a hierarchical view with the ability to expand to see exactly what's happening. And back to the standard view. 
So that's the extended posting preview. Come off those. So posting preview type set to extended and data check turned on. One that kind of slipped me by originally on those general journals, there's this copied posted journal lines. Now this is quite neat because in the past I've had people asking how do I see um, the actual journal and you, you didn't, you saw all the GL entries that it created for example or the ledger entries that it, it had created. If I go to edit list and I update one of these it shouts at me why? Well, that's nothing new. This is actually because the template does not have this enabled and you can't turn something on a batch that's not enabled on a template. So don't let that throw you. Just change the error and go to the general journal templates and enable it there. So on my general journal, enable it. It will turn it on for every batch. And then choose which ones you want to have this feature enabled for. You can select and deselect as you wish. Now, with my Novat batch now copy to journal lines, document check says I'm good to go. So I'm going to post this. With that gone, in the past, all you had was going to the GL entries, maybe going to the GL registers take a look at what you just created, which was pretty good. However, you now have posted general journal as an archive, which has some nice features. So here's my posting that was copied to this archive with this detail in full. As you'd expect, this page be personalized can remove columns. We've probably added in pretty much everything that can be added in at this point, but you'll be able to remove columns and resequence them. Most interesting would be what you can do from here. You copy selected lines to a general journal or copy the GL register posted journal lines. How do these two work? Well, here there's only one posting, but if I select a couple of lines and I choose this first option, it will copy whatever I've selected to a general journal of my choosing. If I use this one, it will copy the entire register. So all journal lines that belong to a selected GL register will be copied to the target general journal. So if I highlight just one of these lines and choose the GL register option, it'll take both because it's the two that make up the completed register. Um, I won't change the posting date I won't replace document number yet. Um, I will reverse the sign. Say this was a mistake and I need to reverse it. So I'll do the same posting date. Document number I'll deal with on the actual journal. I say OK. Yes, I want to open the target journal. And we're here with the reverse of my journal, basically. So an easy way to reverse it and perhaps make some modifications. If I do preview posting, all looks good. If I attempt to post, and now back on the posted general journal archive, I see both versions of my posted journal, different register numbers and same document number. Final quick one that you might not be aware of is there's find entries and it's kind of everywhere now. So if you want to find something in the system really quickly, click find entries and you'll have seen it from the point of view of going for a document like I have here. But we don't have to do that. You can trigger this from anywhere. So find entries is on the role center. Click find entries. So if I give it a document number 10, 80, 15, an invoice I'm looking for, and I click find, then it's found a posted purchase invoice. I can drill through and find the document, or I can view the related entries. 
There are different ways to run this. You can use search for documents or business contacts or item references. I use it mostly for documents, but you don't have to just trigger it from where I've shown on the role center. You could be anywhere and you could do control alt Q and it will trigger it. And rather than document number, you could be looking for anything posted on a particular date. So here's everything posted on that date. And here's the various entries to sales orders. There's a mix of posted and posted documents. So posting date being pre-filled on a sales order it's not clickable, click card to see the page. There's the posting date I've picked up that's been pre-filled. It's not yet been posted. Or seven production orders. 17 bat entries. So it could be quite a flexible tool for you to find what's happened in the system. You could also look for an external document number that your customer's given you that you now need to retrieve the actual document number for in the system. Use an external document number. Click find and find the documents relating to that particular PO number. In this case, from your customer, there's one sales invoice and one shipment. And I can jump on and find the invoice that excellent document number was used on. So there you have five newish features in Business Central that are worth you taking a look at.